If Tuxedo didn't exist, what would design engineers be doing without you? They'd be losing their data. They'd be losing their data. <laughs> right, that's the end of the interview. Thank you for coming, Heather. Great. That was an absolute pleasure. In what scenarios would they be losing their data? So a lot of times our customers come to us with challenges where they lose power um, or the device needs to be in the market for a long time. And with standard file systems, they're going to lose data if the power goes away. And then if they need a device, like we have some companies that we work with in the smart energy space where those have to be on the sides of buildings and whatnot for over 20 years. Standard file systems that come with operating systems really only last eight, nine years max. And so when they need that extra time, it's really they need to come to a person that understands not just file systems, but embedded file systems. Yeah. It's very different than PCs. Right. So for our community, so they understand where the Tuxera solution sits, we're talking about uh, environment. Yeah. We're not talking about things that change every six months, every, t every 12 months. You're in the business right. of long-term <clears throat> products that are out in the field, sitting there, doing their job. And, Forever. <laughs> and, yeah. And their robustness and their reliability and their ability to be able to do their job um, has to be constant over a long period of time. Okay. So just give me some, I know you've got graphics going on here, but in your in your typical customer base, so, so they understand whether you're relevant, what would be your absolutely perfect customer uh, in, in profile in terms of uh, industry? So space is a good one because when things get put up to space, they don't come down usually. Well, we hope they don't. <laughs> so that's one area. Um, Ask NASA, they leave, they leave people up there. Not so much anymore. <laughs> Um, automotive is another industry that's really evolving. And so okay. right. um, from, you know, going from mechanical workings to software workings, which is a huge focus in automotive right now. Right. So let's just take automotive because that's a okay. really, yeah, if you're talking about embedded world, which is where we're today, we're talking about all, automotive makes up, you know, a huge chunk of what design engineers are trying to solve every day. So you just described a scenario where things have been on the side of buildings for 15 years. Yes. Um, I don't know anybody who's had a car for 15 years. Actually, I do. I do know some men. I say, I've had one. <laughs> I just said mad. You're not allowed to use the word mad. And then I discovered that you've had one for 15 years. I am a little mad though. What have so I just okay. done? What have I just done? What rabbit hole have I just disappeared down? Right, so, but typically, you're not talking about 15 years in the automotive sector. So tell me about how you save data. Uh, uh, so that's a typical example. Automotive. So automotive manufacturers are relatively new to the embedded space from a data collection standpoint. Yes. And they have so many more data points that they're pulling from now yes. that they're overloading their flash file systems. Right. And so really having the ability to walk them through and educate them on what needs to be done and why if you use, you know. So we're talking about bandwidth there, aren't we? Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. Yes. So Tuxera, where is a good solution when you've got lots of data points and limited bandwidth. And you need to aggregate that and make sure that the data is there when you need it. Because you can overwrite data at certain points but if you overwrite the wrong data, then you're in trouble. Okay, so. And that becomes really important for powertrain and things like zonal controllers because they have much more control, especially in electric vehicles, mm -hmm. and they impact a lot more than your IVI systems. Right, so today we're talking about, uh, let's say just a, electric vehicles have got a lot, lot, lot more data points. So let's just talk about them. Okay. Because they're, perfect for that whole bandwidth piece. Got an EV, thousands of sensors today, mm -hmm. sending data up, file system having to be very organized, bandwidth an absolute issue. It's not gonna, it's not, not gonna become a less of an issue. No. As we quietly go towards driverless cars, which is never gonna happen. But as we there quite- There was one this morning. Well, we've got these, we've seen these cabs wandering around. Uh, so I suppose it is happening, but still bandwidth, managing all that data coming in. 
your, your answer to the question is if Texo did, didn't exist is you'd lose data. That's, that is how you... Pretty consistently, yeah. Right, okay, good. Tell us now then, Texera do exist. Yeah. How do you solve that problem? Well, we have a transactional file system that rather than a journaling file system, which allows you to have different breakpoints and gives you more control over when and where that data is stored and how it's stored. And then we use... Um, so you, you give good housekeeping? We give great housekeeping. Then we have things like Merkle trees, which we have patents on, which allow you to have that redundancy factor to make sure that it is secure. Right, what was that phrase you just used? It's called Merkle trees. <laughs> Nope, never heard that. What's a Merkle tree? Okay. Merkle tree is where you have kind of almost like a database Yep. where you can say this is the proper root data. Right. And so when the new one comes on, you can erase that and know that you have the proper one. Um, whereas in an EXT files, EXT4 file system, for instance, then you have where you might overwrite data that was really important if it's not appropriately set through right so you give you give not just good housekeeping you give a methodology as well to ensure good housekeeping yes. so it's not just a good clean it's a good where's everything how does it work how, how am i going to find it how am i going to protect it exactly is that right yes okay good so what do you see the challenges even what 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 are the problems that you see when people go oh I had a bandwidth problem, I had an EV, I had a problem of losing data, I decided to use Tuxera. Thank goodness I did, because. So the example that I can use is that there are manufacturers that haven't used us, that haven't solved the when and where their data is being stored appropriately and when it's just overwritten. And so when you don't manage how that's done over time, even if it's, you know, a 15 year cycle for a car, for instance, um, they're running out of their flash chip memory. And so the flash chip dies. We haven't even added AI into a system yet. We haven't even started you know? <laughs> that. We haven't even started that discussion about how you manage it. So, okay. And so it's allowing, you know, can use the Tesla example, which we've written about, where, you know, a year into the file system in the car, it stopped working. They had to do a recall. All they did was upgrade the size of the chip. They didn't take care of the software problem that was causing it. And so now cars, five years later, four years later, are starting to have that issue again. So it's not something that can be solved with just a bigger chip. You really need to understand how the software works on the lower level to be able to manage that appropriately so that you can take all the data from the different sensors and make sure that the parts that you want are still there and get rid of the parts that you don't, but do it in a proper way so that you're wear leveling evenly. Right. So second to last question. Yes. Can you retrofit your system? We can. Good question, isn't it? <laughs> it's Sometimes I ask, relatively good questions not often we know that but, so but sometimes we have folks that have gone to manufacturing with the standard file system that came with the operating system that they were using at the time it failed them and they've come back to us and said can you help usually the house is on fire by then and they need it yesterday and that doesn't always happen um but it is something that we're able to help our customers with right right okay so uh i've bought into the idea that I should be doing my housekeeping better. Yes, I to have a clean house. I bought into the idea that I should have some 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 logic and some organisation behind that. So I should have a what was that word you used? Merkle tree. Merkle tree. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to say the phrase Merkle tree ever again in my life. But anyway, <laughs> I'll say it again. Merkle tree. Merkle tree. Housekeeping. I now understand that uh, the reality is, as every day passes there's a chance that my data is going to end up in the wrong place, get lost, or in some way go wrong. I can't afford that to happen because I'm taking in data from thousands of sensors in my car. So then I've worked out that actually I can go to Tuxera and then I can retrofit their system so that I can protect that data even if my car has been out in the, in the field for a couple of years. So I buy into all of that. 
how do I evaluate Tuxera so that I can guess? But there must be a process by which I do that. Um, so really get a hold of the sales there's on the website. But, but do I get a piece of software? What, what do I do? What do I do? So there's an evaluation agreement that you right. have to sign up for. Okay. And then we give you full source to access. Right. Um, and you get to play with it. Right. Depending on which file system and operating system, there are some versions. For instance, if you're using FreeRTOS, you got on GitHub today and download our Reliance Edge. And, and I, play and, with it without even talking to us. And you're completely OS agnostic. We are OS agnostic and hardware agnostic. Right. So really, whatever I've got, I, I know that I can, I'm can. i going to be able to embed and implement. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And last question for uh, our listeners. Is there any parameters that you set in terms of the number of, uh, the number of devices you have or the size of your system or the amount of data that you know? You know, there's no point coming to us if you're this, but if you're this... There is. So we work with companies that have huge data sets and large flash memory, and we have people that have itsy bitsy tiny memory. And so it just depends. Is your data critical? And is it something that you need to hold on to for the lifetime of your device? Right. If the answer to that is yes, we don't really care how big or small it is. Where could it be? No, it's not critical. Well, you'd be surprised. Right. I'm sure. Okay. People that want to sell lots of devices, so more along the consumer and don't care about the robustness of them. Yes. They're gone. They're gone. But customer buys them today, throw them away a month's time. Yeah, doesn't matter. However, if I spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a Tesla, I'd quite like that data to be robust and with the, and that we keep it. Yeah, if you can convince them to talk to me, I know how to solve their problem. Yeah. Okay. So good. Great introduction, Tuxera. Thank you, sir. Hopefully we've shown you that if you need to keep your data very secure, you have to have good housekeeping and you have to have a... Merkle tree. Merkle tree. <laughs> uh, and you might need one of them later on. You can retrofit it. But if you actually just want to design straight up, Tuxera can give you the opportunity to go and evaluate their software. Uh, whether you've got very few devices or whether you've got thousands of devices, the key question is, is my data critical? There you go. There you have it. Thank you. Thank you, Guy.